Hey friends, hope you're well. Apple does product line pricing really well. Prices and performance steadily climb up, starting with the MacBook Air, Pro, iMac, Mac Mini, Mac Studio, and then finally the creme de la creme, the Mac Pro. That is until Apple released the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip a few weeks ago. And I think we may well have a Mac that makes the Mac Pro look sort of silly in their product lineup. After 200 hours of real world use since launch day, here is my review of the new Mac Studio. I'll go over the setup, real world uses over the last two weeks, and even some gaming. I think many will want to seriously consider the new Mac Studio to grace your setup. So at first glance, Apple hasn't changed the beautiful design of the studio. It sort of looks like two Apple TVs fused together. At the same time, thankfully pricing hasn't changed either. The M2 Max variant starts at $1,999, while the M2 Ultra at $3,999. So this is my first ever Mac Studio, and it's replacing my previously docked MacBook Pro M2 Max setup, which I'll compare the Mac Studio to. I've paired it up with the LG 40 inch ultra wide 5K monitor, Apple's Magic Keyboard, the MX3 mouse, and G RAID storage. I think it makes for a pretty powerful clean setup. Also, if you like the custom wallpaper aesthetic here, you can find it in the link below. And while nothing has changed with its exterior, well, this year inside the Mac Studio looks identical to the far more expensive Mac Pro, and this changes everything. So the biggest addition is, of course, the new M2 Ultra chip, and at its core, no pun intended, is essentially a double M2 Max chip featuring 24 core CPU, 60 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of memory, and one terabyte SSD as standard. Quite literally identical to the Mac Pro on paper, which let's remember is a full $3,000 dearer. Over the last few weeks, the raw power from the M2 Ultra has translated to some real life benefits, even coming from the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip, which is already plenty powerful. So some real uses over the last few weeks, for example, using Figma, which is a design tool that stores and renders information about layers, even when they're not even visible, has been infinitely smooth to use. Working with the entire Adobe suite is faster than ever. For example, the healing brush on Lightroom is near instantaneous, where it might previously take a couple seconds to render out on my M2 Max MacBook. And one of the biggest differences I've seen is working with the terabytes of 4K footage on Final Cut Pro. Timeline scrubbing now feels as if I'm watching a pre-rendered video even with stacks of effects applied, and also rendering times have been cut about 25% from the M2 Max MacBook, and that is very significant. If you do any sort of large-scale 3D modeling, you're going to get even more out of the M2 Ultra. It's really incredible how fast the Mac Pro, I mean, how fast the Mac Studio is. And the M2 Ultra also runs circles around the Intel Mac Pro. Apple's custom silicon is still as impressive as ever. Where x86 chips have to conform to x86 architecture, Apple's bespoke internals have no such restrictions because they continue to create the chip hardware surrounding the chip, and the operating system in tandem. So it's not surprising that the M2 Ultra is an incredibly powerful chip. What is surprising is the fact that there's almost zero difference between the Mac Studio and Mac Pro. I've scratched my head thinking about the differences, and this is what I was able to gather that may get someone to fork out an extra $3,000. Number one is the tower encasing that you get on the Mac Pro, but it also adds a full 30 extra pounds in weight. Number two, SSDs may get faster read write speeds because it's in a PCI slot rather than a Thunderbolt enclosure. Number three, there's expandable slots and PCI support. That's probably the biggest one. And number four, let's not forget, this one's also really important, you get case wheels. I'll let you answer in the comments down below if you think these are reasons that justify an extra $3,000. Adding to the confusion that I have is the fact that the Mac Pro isn't able to take advantage of a dedicated GPU and you can't upgrade the memory thanks to it all being unified in the M2 Ultra. So this sort of just leaves the Mac Pro with the narrowest of audiences, which is basically people who need the Mac operating system for intensive work, don't care for RAM or GPU upgrades, yet need multiple PCIe expansion slots. 
I can't think of anyone that needs something so specific except maybe MKBHD. But what this does mean for the Mac Studio is we're looking at some serious value for money here. Heck, even those eyeing the Mac Mini and wanting to upgrade its RAM to 32 gigabytes is better off looking at the Mac Studio at that point. Its SSD read write speeds here on Blackmagic that I've tested are also just ridiculously fast. I got an average read speed of over 6,000 megabits a second and write speed of 5,000 megabits a second, which handles literally everything you throw at it, including 12K video editing. So when you add this all up, along with the fact that there's a $3,000 saving from the Mac Pro and it's a much smaller physical package, the Mac student may as well dethrone the Mac Pro. But no matter which Mac you choose to use, you'll get a lot of value from Clean My Mac X, today's video sponsor. Clean My Mac X takes the hassle out of Mac maintenance so we can enjoy our new Macs and all its new hardware and features without running into hiccups. I sort of use it as a preventative tool so my Macs run fresh like it did on day one. I've also been using the menu feature on the new Mac Studio to monitor and track the Mac's performance here and all the connected devices in the ports. It's a really useful overview actually. If you have an older Mac, it's always a great idea to run Smart Scan. Just click this button here and your Mac will be protected, optimized and cleaned within a few minutes. So overall, if you own a Mac or you're planning to get a Mac Studio yourself, Clean My Mac X has been one of my favorite apps for years, and it's an overall great tool to look after your Mac, new or old. You can try it out for seven days for free, and they're also giving you guys a 20% off discount for a limited time. Check it out in the links down below. Now, I've also been quite enjoying how the Mac Studio looks on the desk. It has a minimal footprint, and I'm glad they didn't change its design. It's identical to the design and size of the previous generation Mac Studio with the M1 chip. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Power Mac G4 Cube, if anyone remembers that, just without the see-through encasing people loved so much back in the 2000s. It's big enough to have presence on the desk, but it's also small enough to sit just about anywhere on the desk. The same can't be said for the Mac Pro simply because it's so big. The ingenious airflow intake on the bottom of the Mac Studio makes it whisper quiet in operation, even under heavy load. I cannot hear it whatsoever, it's basically silent. It's also one of the rare few Macs that has ports at the very front and useful ones at that. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports and an SD card reader. The M2 Max variant gets USB-C ports instead, which means they're limited to 10 gigabytes per second, whereas the Thunderbolt 4 reaches 400 gigabytes per second on the M2 Ultra variant. But yeah, it's been great being able to have these ports in arm's reach and not having to rely on my CalDigit TS4 underneath the desk. Also, the Mac Studio is relatively small, but it is a heavy boy with a cooling system being the factor and reason behind both its weight and height. And fun fact, the M2 Ultra variant is a whole two pounds heavier than the M2 Max because it comes with a copper cooling system rather than aluminium. Again, great bang for buck for power users. Moving on to something quite surprising, the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip is the first Mac I've ever used that could legitimately be labeled a gaming machine. I've been playing some Borderlands 3 and Counter-Strike Go, and they all run at a solid 60 FPS even on my ultra-wide display. The exciting part here is it's set to get even better. Currently, we're limited to a very small range of Mac-compatible games, but with the upcoming new Sonoma OS, Apple is giving developers the tools to port their games over to Mac with the Game Porting Toolkit. Plus the new game mode on Sonoma will apparently lower Bluetooth latency and prioritize the CPU and GPU for running a game. So that should mean even better frame rates and performance for gaming. So it's quite promising, especially when the foundation of this Mac Studio has proven to run the games I've been playing really well. So it's quite exciting for gamers. Let's move on to the negatives now. I have found some things that are slightly disappointing. And for starters, I find the base of the Mac Studio to be surprisingly unstable. So when plugging in cords or an SD card, it shifts about on the desk, which is risky business when most people will be sitting theirs on the edge of their desks like mine here. Adding adhesive underneath can solve this, but yeah, 
I expected it to be a bit more stable considering its weight. The speakers are also quite disappointing. It may be unfair to judge the Mac Studio on its speakers, but considering it's a $4,000 machine, you'd think something more than a single driver speaker would be realistic. Like I said, this is my first Mac Studio and I was expecting MacBook spatial audio quality sound, but as it is, they sound pretty bad and should only be reserved for system sounds. You probably want to get speakers for this as soon as you can. An included Thunderbolt 4 cable would have been nice too. I was scrambling to find a spare Thunderbolt 4 cable long enough to connect it to my monitor. And as you can see here, I was struggling. The longer Thunderbolt 4 cables sold by Apple come at a big premium, no surprise, so I opted for one from Cable Matters off Amazon, which does the trick just fine. Finally, RAM and storage upgrades are very steep. They set you back hundreds of dollars, and a maxed out Mac Studio will cost even more than a standard Mac Pro. But hey, it's the result of Apple owning the entire ecosystem and Mac architecture. So the Mac Studio delivers not incremental, but noticeably large improvements over the M1. It's been such a joy to work off, absolutely destroying every single work task I throw at it without stutter. And it truly is a powerful desktop computer, most ideal for power users and creatives. This year's Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip is essentially a far cheaper and significantly slimmed down version of the Mac Pro. And for that fact, the Mac Studio is, at least for now, the king of Macs. You will not go wrong with the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip if you're looking for as much Mac computing juice as you can currently get. Now, I just need to figure out how I'm going to afford Apple's Vision Pro. If you made it to the very end of this video, drop the code word comment Ultraman to confuse those who don't make it to the end of this video. I'll also drop a video right here for you to check out on my favorite Mac apps to get the most out of your new Mac. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.